Michelle and John, thank you for agreeing to um, kind of help us navigate um, what retailers might be going through right now, and as well as talk about some things that you've been doing and ideas that you that you might have found that have worked. And then we're going to open it up and let everybody kind of chime in and um, and participate in the conversation. So, who wants to go first, John or Michelle? Oh, I'm going to let John go first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not always women first, <laughs> but um, the. Uh, just what, what type of retail do we have involved here? I'm not sure I'm um, aware. You wanna, of should we do a round of introductions? Yeah, great. could we? Please, yeah. Perfect, perfect. Um, I'm going to just go with what I see in front of me. So Donna, would you like to go first? Be happy to. I'm Donna Satterley with Hillsborough Downtown Partnership and trying to help out all sorts of industries in downtown Hillsborough. Excellent. Thank you. Sherry. Um, I'm the owner of Hillsborough Learning Center, a tutoring center over here on 3rd and Washington. Excellent. Kimberly. I'm a board member of the Hillsborough Food Co-op. We are a startup that is uh, trying to figure out a place to land. Elizabeth. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Higgins. I'm a teaching artist. My studio is in downtown Hillsborough, right on Main Street. Um, I have a gallery and studio, but I'm primarily um, a teacher. Excellent. Thank you. Community. Re Renee? Yep. There. Oh, hi. <laughs> Renee Bennett, Bennett Urban Farm Store, downtown, Ma downtown Main Street, 260 East Main Street. Excellent. Thank you. Brad Smith? Uh, Brad Smith, Windsor Properties. Uh, we are a uh, property owner, so I'm just interested because we have some retail uh, tenants that are having problems right now so yeah, looking for ideas to give them help excellent thank you carla oh hey sorry i'm like really small because my camera's really weird anyway uh city <laughs> hills for economic development downtown revitalization excellent thank you sharon hello sharon brubaker from brubaker photography my husband craig and i own a portrait studio um we photograph families and um, we also uh, do uh, professional portraits and um, we do quite a, quite a variety, although we don't photograph weddings or anything, but um, anyway, we are both service and retail. Excellent, thank you. Um, I can just see a number. So if your last four digits of your number is 1301. Oh, that's me. This is oh, okay. Julie from Nansen. Yeah, Julie from Nansen on third, um, you know, retail consignment. Uh, what's challenging for me is a lot of people have their clothes, clothing in here and being closed is, is pretty frustrating. So, but working on trying to get an online store going. So that's kind of a plus. Excellent. And we have one other, but it's six, four, three, five. I'm David Fager, Quest. I'm Julie's husband. Okay, excellent. Nice to, nice to have you all join us. Um, hopefully that gives you a better sort of um, foundation of who's on the call. And again, I will turn it over to, um, to John and Michelle, and you guys can arm wrestle for uh, first. <laughs> Michelle, do you want to just uh, describe your business a little bit, then I'll Oh, oh sure. Okay, so um, I'm the owner of Piccolo Mondo Toys. We're right on Main Street across the street from Gimry's, yay, um, and the Bennett's as well. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> uh, yeah, and so we are, I mean, it's, it's challenging because we've always really built our business to be hands-on with children and right now that's the worst thing you could do is have kids coming in to touch products um and so uh or anybody really um trying to keep our employees safe so we closed our doors on march 16th prior to the governor's announcement just because we'd gone through a weekend and we were concerned about our employees as well um and so we have always offered curbside pickup but and we've had a website prior but i have to say that our website was not very good and it still has some growing pains um, but we are spending we as in i am spending lots of time <laughs> trying to get uh, my website to be better um, and we have seen 
I can't even tell you, I think probably 500 orders um, on our web, which wow. is a lot for us. Uh, that's not normal. Um, normally we have a little spike in December and we might have a couple orders a month. We, we never really went after the web business. I always thought it was like um, challenging to compete with big box stores. So we tried to diversify what we thought we uh, could offer that was different from uh, online was uh, the shopping experience but when you take away the shopping experience you have to get creative um, and so for us we're doing um, you know FaceTime with our customers that's probably the best way to make them feel like they're shopping at our store uh, we are doing we're posting pictures because we find that our customers are often shopping after hours when we're not open um, and so we've been able to take pictures throughout our store and then customers are circling things and sending it to us via Facebook Messenger uh, we are using our personal cell phones because we only have two phone lines in fact the Hillsborough store only has one phone line which has been very challenging for us we have been hearing phone lines probably are one of the biggest challenges uh, we do have our employees working in the store but only a couple at a time to try to provide the six of uh, the distance the social distance which I hate that word by the way <laughs> there's a few words that I hope I never hear again uh, but anyway unprecedented is probably one right there on the top <laughs> so I'm um, sorry just uh, we've had some really good days um, Easter was great for us because um, you know with kids business we had Easter baskets and we were doing custom Easter baskets for customers which we've always done but again this was just in a different way where people couldn't come in and we were their eyes and ears and and hands <laughs> and so we've just been adapting and we are adapting every hour in some cases I mean just trying to come up with different ideas and being open and flexible for people um, it has been challenging because my staff is getting texts at 12 o'clock at night. I mean, their own personal cell phones and people um, not understanding that it's their personal cell phone and they may be off that day. Um, I have heard of a new service called Grasshopper where you can route the phone calls and I need to explore that a little further. Um, I'm putting it out there because it's something that um, could help others. Um, I have not had time to look into it yet, but um, that could be helpful for uh, you know, for employees. And we're also, I'm part of multiple associations. Um, and so I have been on some Zoom calls with other toy store owners across the country and trying to hear what they're doing and, um, you know, taking any of the good ideas, time permitting to try to roll with that and making some partnerships. Um, so I've heard of other, um, the surprise bags that we're don we're donating to elementary schools here locally that people can uh, donate. That was actually a good friend of mine who owns a toy store in Buffalo, New York, and it was her idea. And um, she told me about it and then suggested I do it for my community. And it's been a great thing for us. So I think being flexible, um, you know, I had a lot of really big cry sessions that helps get it out to a little bit. I mean, this is not fun and I'm not prospering. Don't get me, you know, don't think I'm prospering here. This is really hard retail environment right now. And there's been some bad days, uh, but I'm trying to um, focus on what I can do and not think too terribly far. If this goes into December, I'm really like, you know, I keep hearing a second wave and how we're going to all have, this again in December and that that would be really challenging for us um, but I'm just trying to stay positive and see you know what I can do for my employees as well as my community and when I feel like I'm serving others then I sort of sort of stay more positive and yeah so I, I think you're I think you're touching on a, um, a good point there Michelle that uh, you know how do you stay positive because it's important especially when you have uh, other people that you work with um, to share that feeling and uh, stay that way yourself. And you, you mentioned the uh, industry group that you're involved with, and that's been beneficial for me also. Um, there's a Facebook group out there called Shoe Dogs United, um, which is uh, a bunch of different shoe stores that uh, have put together a Facebook group. And there's been some really good discussions on there that I've really picked up from. And so 
that's one thing I'd really encourage everyone to do is to reach out to um, industry groups on Facebook or um, just other people that you know about that are in the industry, whether they're local or whether they're you know across the country. And then um, also just looking at different Facebook groups by by neighborhood. I know there's a downtown Hillsboro group. Um, and actually, that, there might even be a couple of them, but um, the chamber, I think, has done a real good job of uh, sharing a lot of valuable resources that are out there and just um, reaching out and involved, being involved in sharing and looking at different webinars or whatever it is. I think uh, that's one way to stay connected and realize that it's not just a Hillsboro problem. It's not just Oregon, United States. And this is a worldwide thing that everyone's going through. And, um, it, uh, I guess it helps a little bit to know we're all <laughs> disconcerted and, and all um, kind of out of the, um, out of the norm of far, as far as how we normally operate, but it's uh, definitely unusual times. And um, I've started using the, the words um, physical uh, distance rather than social distance, uh, just because it sounds a little bit you know, easier to work with. But you know, there, there's a lot of different aspects to this also, I, you mentioned the um, the uh, the online thing and how you uh, migrate to that. We've kind of gone full circle. Um, you know, you go back about 10 years ago, we had a fully operational online presence and it just wasn't anything for us at all. It was costing us more money than it was bringing in. And so we just switched to just an informational page only. And there's still a fair expense in keeping that up to date with what we have coming in and, and whatnot. But it's, uh, you have to have the time to, to dedicate to it and then you have to choose the right um, format for it. We're on um, a platform called Shopify, which has a, uh, um, a shopping cart component to it. But uh, we aren't using that. We're just showing pictures. We don't have a shopping opportunity. And now with the situation the way it is, we're trying to figure out how do we possibly convert por a portion of what we have over to Shopify or over to a shopping cart and, uh, and going with that. There's also another platform called uh, Locally that we're looking at also. And through the, um, you know, what we, have, well, just a little bit, background on, on us, we ha actually have four stores um, in our group. Um, we have the store in downtown Hillsboro, Gimry Shoes, which has been a family um, company for a long, long time. Um, my brother uh, has a store down in Astoria, um, which just got a little uh, notice on CNN here the other day, or today, um, if you happen to check out CNN, he's mentioned on the homepage there. But um, the... Uh, um, the, uh, you know, where, you know, how we do these different things is, is, uh, is, is challenging. And I think, um, it's, uh, trying to figure out the format, the interactions and, and what we want to do is, is important, but we, we've got the, the one store, the Hillsboro store. Then we also have, um, three new balance stores under a license agreement with new balance, uh, shoe company. And, um, we have one out at Bridgeport Village and then two up in Seattle. So we've been experiencing quite a bit of different um, interactions, different uh, situations with basically each store being in, in two states and then also um, the different locales that we are. But um, we experienced locally on the um, through the New Balance group and we have a presence there where we, they can actually see our inventory. And that's what we're trying to do now with uh, the Hillsboro stores. We're investigating on how we get our um, um, our product up on locally. So as, as far as, I'd be kind of curious, as far as other platforms out there that people are using for online presence, uh, other than, is anyone else using locally or Shopify or are there any other platforms that anyone else is using out there? I'm using the Square Store. The Square online store that attaches mm -hmm. straight to my point of sale, so it just self-populates everything. Yeah, that that makes it nice. It was very easy. 
I've heard of other toy store owners um, using the Shopify and also Square. Um, I have uh, my my website is through um, it's called Specialty Toy Network, so it's special to toy stores. Um, and they actually are located in McMinnville um, and they've never been busier. And those guys are, have lo helped so many toy stores across the country. And um, it has definitely been worth our time. Um, the scary part was that it linked to my database of inventory and matched up their photos that they had of a library that they work with vendors for and the descriptions and it matched to my inventory. And uh, that works when your inventory is 100% accurate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah. with having three stores and lots of tiny little items, like little small items that all of a sudden got uploaded onto a website, um, it has been a little bit of a goose chase, you know, sometimes trying to, to get all of the items for one order um, and, and, so, and trying to clean it up a little bit. Um, so we went from having maybe 100 and maybe 200 items on our website to having 12,000, you know, it's like way too much items now and having to turn them off. So um, the good part about it was that people were trying to buy things. Um, I don't think it's the most user-friendly website and it definitely can be improved. Um, however, at least we had something and we could call the customer and say, you know what, we don't have these colored pencils, but we have these that we could offer you and we could make switches out. And most of the time they're just solving a problem. And I think that that is what, as a retailer, as business owners, small business owners, our advantage is that we can adapt quicker than big stores can. So we need to think about how, what do our customers need from us? For us, we have many working parents or we have um, grandparents that cannot see their grandchildren. Um, and so we have to think, okay, how can we solve their problem? How can we we started offering local delivery. We have curbside as well, pickup. So how, how can we help a grandparent that maybe lives in a different state find us and connect to their grandchildren? I mean, that's a huge thing is families being split up. Um, or a working parent who has a two-year-old. I always sort of joke that there's nothing really we can help them with, <laughs> but we try. Um, here's some games that are, you know, single player or that encourage them to be independent. Um, but having some bundles. So if you can't sell every single thing that you have online, do some bundles. Um, and so it's like, here's a $50 solution <laughs> of something or $25, whatever you want it to be. But figure out what the problem is that your customers are having right now um, and figuring out how you could be a solution for them. I think that's, and that's probably true of retailers or business owners all the time, but it's heightened right now. Michelle, yeah, they, it sounds um, like, that, oh, sorry, John. I just wanted to follow that up. Michelle, you're also doing those bundles by age group. Is that correct? Make it easier for the grandparents or the parents? Uh, we are looking to do those bundles right now. We're, we the website doesn't have that sophisticated yet, but I'm looking to have that. Um, so that's my goal would be to have uh, bundles where people could just say, "Here, I want to spend thirty-five dollars, and I have a seven-year-old birthday gift that I need. It's for my niece." and she likes unicorns. <laughs> and then we go around the store and put it together and you know, there you go. Um, friend birthday gifts, you know, as long as they're over $25, we're offering the, the delivery for $25 or more. Um, oh, you know, I just wanna make it accessible for people who, who can't afford. I know that there's a lot of owners that have it higher. And some people like, um, I think Crystal from Pup, um, um, Pepper Nickel um, has it for less. So it has to work for you. I have three stores. So my area, I've been to Lake Oswego. I've been to North Portland. I've been everywhere and it's me. And yeah, I'm kind of burned out a little bit. <laughs> I have to say, I mean, my 15 year old son is trying to, you know, get miles for his learning permit. So we're trying to make it a lemonade experience out of lemons, but um, you know, it's most of the time we're a small business. So we don't have, I have 14 employees that I'm trying to keep working. Um, but not I, in terms of them delivering product, I don't really want them out there doing that. And so I'd rather be the one doing that personally. Mm -hmm. But I have, I mean, we've been working and, you know, some of my employees are older and they are not as sophisticated on uh, 
all of the different things I'm asking him to do now, Facebook, you know, FaceTime. They're like, are you kidding me? <laughs> you know? uh, but they have been adapting and I give them chunks at a time. You know, if I give them everything on one day, then I probably lose some people. Um, and we, this is voluntary as well. We had 10 employees who are not in our stores, a couple that we had to let go. Like we had a warehouse manager and we're not getting shipments in. So that was unfortunately a layoff, but we're trying to not lay people off. Um, so we had one employee who went to England to visit her mom during this whole thing and then came back and was in quarantine. So we were able to have her, luckily she was an employee that's been with us for 13 years. So she knows the inventory very well and she helped my website. Um, so we were able to keep her working at home for two weeks. Um, but in retail, it's hard to keep people working from home, I think. Um, some of my colleagues across the country have had an easier time doing that um, and allowing. I definitely, I'm also, sometimes people might think I'm a little bit controlling, sorry, um, <laughs> because it's my brand and I worry. And so I haven't in the past allowed my employees all access on Facebook and things like that. But I kind of had to put that out the window. I mean, I, I just had to let go of some of my controlling behavior. <laughs> I mean, I, I try not to be too controlling, but you know, again, I still go in and edit and add punctuation <laughs> where it's needed. But I, you know, it's hard. You, you, you're like create a brand and you don't want something to mess up, but you also have to let go a bit. And when you do, they're, they come to me and they're asking like, what can we do to help? And, and I appreciate that. And we're all in this as a team. That's how we try to build it. We're a team. And some of them have skills well, most of them have skills that I don't have. We're trying to have, you know, a complete team. We're not all the same. So we try to, to play each up on each other's strengths. Are you offering any uh, discounts or are you full price? Oh, um, yes. I have a $5 off coupon that launched sadly right before this whole thing. So that's been out in the community. Um, and uh, we, so it's a catalog that was already published. It's only $5 off, which is not a huge discount. Um, it was off any purchase. Um, and so we're offering that on curbside. Um, if the purchase is over 25, I'm still going ahead with that uh, for my um, deliveries, but I haven't done any other discounts. I, I have heard some stores doing some flash sales on via Facebook Live, um, as well as on their websites. Um, and they've been able to turn old product um, by offering some things at a sale. Uh, one of the, the toy store owners that was in, I think she's in um, Ohio, she said it was her best clearance sale that she's ever had. Um, they just kind of have shown things and her and her employees um, that were able to work, you know, put pictures up and, um, and, you know, made things available. I've also heard of another platform on Facebook called, um, it's like comments sold, I think is what it is. So during a Facebook live, I'm not sure how it works because I haven't done this. Um, they, a person can, can comment something like that they want to buy it. And so that's a toy store in Minnesota who's able to then send product out afterwards. So they just basically, you know, put an item up and talk about it on Facebook Live. And then the customers would say, right, sold and the number of the item. And then they, I don't know how it works, but it's a website connected via Facebook. Um, there is this fabulous store in Camas called Arcana, Arctana, Arctana. And if you haven't followed them, I would follow them. She does, she's not open right now, but she does a lot of creative things with Instagram and Facebook. It's spelled A-R-K-T-A-N-A. -A. I met her. Um, she is a shoe store and a clothing store with ex women's accessories. And I just think that she's very dynamic in her marketing. Um, and so I think that's another thing is get ideas outside of your own industries. I mean, I'm not, I don't sell shoes or handbags or anything like that, but I follow her um, because she's very dynamic. And oh, also uh, some of you might have reps that you work with. 
I do. I have very good relationships and friends that are my reps. Um, and I'm hearing what they're doing. And when they ask if they can lend a hand, I'm saying yes. <laughs> um, you know, why not? I mean, we're all in this together. They, their businesses depend on me ordering from them and I can't order from them if I'm not selling things. So I am saying yes to their help um, here and there. We were able to boost up our activity bags with some corporate vendor uh, products that they gave me. Um, so we, we could make them a little nicer. Yeah. So, and then yeah. Uh, the, uh, the, 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 the discount is something that, uh, that we've been facing. I know uh, um, right when everything started happening, uh, New Balance started offering a 25% off online discount. And so uh, we matched that and now we're starting to pull that back um, because you have to look at your margins and try to figure out what makes sense. And so we've kind of, we're pulling back to 20%. And then there's also, you know, the shipping game also because shipping can get pretty expensive. Very. And um, the uh, New Balance corporate was offering on their website uh, free shipping for any purchase over fifty dollars, and so we we kind of upped it to a hundred dollars, and we're trying to pull back on some of the costs that are associated with this to help with the margins because that's something that, as uh, independent retailers, we all need to be concerned about is how do we handle that. Um, we've tried to look at also. Um, trying to offer different uh, discounts on off the shipping, whether we pay $5 or $10, something of that nature. And in the past, we've always just had a straight um, $9.95 charge for any um, shipment from the stores. But um, right now, unfortunately, we're in that uh, free shipping on any purchase over $100. And then you get to the point also of, uh, where do you get the boxes for ship out? Uh, that's another thing that we've been trying to deal with. And uh, we placed an order with Uline, I think it was, that um, yeah. got some in. And then where do you have those shipped to is another angle because the, our storefront, we don't have people at the store on a continual basis. So we've had to have some shipments start coming to, uh, to home addresses and then trying to split them up as we can from that point. Um, but uh, th there's uh, all these different things that you don't always think about ahead of time, but come up and uh, you have to start to uh, start dealing with. And the shipping, the prices on shipping has gone up is what we've seen. Things that mm -hmm. we was less. I think that the companies are, uh, I don't know, overloaded. Um, but even, I mean, all the shipping rates seem to have gone up. Um, we lost our shirts on one order going to Kentucky um, a couple weeks ago. Uh, and I learned from that, uh, but it's really tough. So we, we really would rather not ship. <laughs> we can mm -hmm. ship, but it's hard. I think that's why we started, we're more of a local company online. And so we're trying mm -hmm. to get the curbside and the, and the um, delivery. Yeah, we're, we're trying to add that little angle of uh, free shipping under $100 within our local trade area um, as a phrase at the end to limit it that way and not have that uh, exorbitant uh, shipping charge. Yeah. But even with curbside service, it's a matter of trying to figure out and strategize on how to make that work. Um, we don't have someone in the store continually through the week and trying to set a schedule um, for when we have someone there for that curbside pickup, what's convenient for the customers, what's, what works out well. And um, right now it's, I think, um, well, it depends upon the store, two to three days a week, uh, like 11 to two, something of that nature during the middle of the day. And that seems to work out pretty well, whether it's a Monday, Thursday, or Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Monday seems to be relatively important because you do tend to get a few, we tend to get more orders over the weekend. And it's important that you respond um, as quickly as possible. And you touched on the um, communications end of it. We uh, went to an all internet service, UMA, um, here about four or five months ago. And that's been good in, the, in that we can forward um, voice messages via email to whoever we designate. And, um, but, it th but then it's also a matter of um, how much do you infringe on employees' times that when they're at home 
as far as answering emails or responding to phone calls that come in in the same way with voice messages that are forwarded to their phones are uh, and we always you know they've agreed to that but um you know it's 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 a tough situation on on how to how to deal with that so john i have a question about whether or not um any any of the folks on our call have had conversations with their landlords have they asked for um reduced lease rates how is that conversation going i know this morning you talked about vendors and having conversations with vendors i'm just curious as to what is the the sympathy level with the folks that you have to do business with um in terms of understanding your circumstances and situation well i'll start that off we've had we've got four different landlords um and one of them for the Hillsborough store, fortunately, is myself and my brother, which makes it a little bit easier. But um, with the other stores, it's been a real variety of responses that we've got. Um, one of them um, was willing to look at a three month period and um, do the uh, um, an actual, not just deferral. It, se it seems like everyone has been willing to at least do a deferral where you take you don't have to pay rent for say april and then you add it on at some point either at the end of the lease or you shift it forward a little bit and pay it back by the end of the year but um we had one landlord that looked at a three-month period and said that we'll write off two-thirds of that which basically means two months free rent and then we get to defer um one month and there's a choice of options they gave us on how we want to pay that back yeah. um, We've had other landlords that just, you know, say, well, we're going to kind of play it by ear and we'll see what happens. And we had one landlord that said, uh, we reserve the right to, uh, to do what we want to do at some point down the line and um, wasn't willing to make an agreement. Um, the one on the deferral for the two thirds of it um, wants me to sign an agreement right away. But then I did talk to a land or to a leasing um, consultant that works out of Denver, Colorado, that we've worked with in the past. And he um, does leases all over the country. And his response was, don't sign anything now. Just wait and see how this all plays out because none of us know how long this is going to last. Um, and I think um, it's, it remains to be seen. But yeah, I'd be interested too. And what, what responses, and I know we've got another landlord on the line too, but um, what sort of responses has there been from, from other uh, tenants out there? Uh, well, we are our own landlord in Hillsboro. So my husband um, sort of jokingly, when he is um, negotiating, he says to the other two that one of our landlords is uh, really working with us. <laughs> but uh, the other two uh, are just wanting deferment and we still owe the same amount of money, but just uh, longer to pay it, um, which doesn't really help retail. I mean, we're, I don't know where we're going to make up the money. Um, we had been doing so well in Hillsboro, growing our business. We were up 25% last year and 25% the year before, um, which are big numbers. And I understand that it had had kind of the inventory was lower when we were purchased the business. So some of that just is having the right brands and, and such, but we worked really hard to grow it. Um, and we're down 25, uh, I think 52% for April um, because Easter was in April and we do a huge business in April. So I don't know where we're going to make up those dollars. I mean, I just, I don't know. Um, that's the tricky part is owing it later. It doesn't really help. <laughs> I don't know. Feel free to unmute yourself if you have a comment or want yeah. to talk to this. Thank you. Our, our landlord has just deferred our payment for last month or for this month. We haven't really had much of a discussion with her about what we're going to be doing going forward. It's kind of hard because, you know, we're only been here for six weeks, six months. So we don't have that much banked to do double payments on rent in the next three months. So we're not sure what we're going to do. The one thing I would say is it's not like there's five or six other retailers standing <laughs> behind you waiting for your space to be vacated That's right true. now. 
<laughs> like, yeah. uh, the space was empty for two years, I think, before we went into it. So, In one of our locations, our lease is up at the end of the year. And so my husband thinks that that will be the time when we will be able to renegotiate things. But I mean, that's, we don't know. There's a lot of uncertainty right now. Anybody else on that? So uh, we, yeah, um, I can oh. hang on Sorry. just a second, Brad, go ahead, Sharon. Uh, so we run our business from our home and that's a little bit different, but we do rent our home and um, only moved here in December during our busiest season. Um, <clears throat> but they've been great about it. And so it's really just a portion of our rent that is for our business, but they've still been really understanding and they're not going to reduce it any, but they'll let us pay in, in increments as we receive money when we receive money. So that's, that's been nice. Great. Thank you. Brad, you had a comment? Yeah, I was just going to say our, we, for our um, retail stuff that we have, it's a very small stuff. It's uh, like um, nail, places, small restaurants, that kind of stuff, hair shops, and we um, waive the rent for um, May um, without a deferral, and we just basically said to them, you know, we're, we're going to play it by ear. We didn't sign any agreement with them. We didn't want them to sign anything with us because we, we don't know what it is, what's, what the future looks like, and um, I would just say as a landlord, you know, there's multiple kinds of landlords. There's us that are small businesses, just like uh, the retailers. Then there's, you know, the large chain ones that are, are owned by some REIT or they're owned by, a, a, you know, CalPERS. There is no landlord really to negotiate with. But from our standpoint, you know, we're just as scared as the retailers, I think. Um, so I, I, it, it's a conversation you need to have. If, if we were, if we had a, a tenant that we haven't heard from, we'd be really worried. Even if it's bad news, I would say, call your landlord and tell them, hey, it's bad news, but at least I'm here to talk through it and, and figure out a game plan. I, I think that's good advice, Brad, um, is to at least get something on the record as far as what you're willing to do. And my position is that, you know, I, I gave you the landlord's position, but my position is that we shouldn't have to pay rent for April at all. Um, April, we're down 95% um, for the month of April, and it's usually been one of our biggest months of the spring. We load up on merchandise January through March, and then um, April, May, and June is when we unload all our um, spring merchandise. And so we're really getting hit hard right now. And um, my perspective is that this isn't usual time. I mean, this is something that um, hasn't been faced before and um, who knows what's going to be the situation down the line, whether we face it again, but um, it's not business as normal. And as Deanna mentioned, the, the, re the landlords out there, they're going to want a tenant when things get back to normal. They're going to want you guys in their space and they're going to want to have you uh, have a tenant there um, generating some revenue and helping to support the other tenants that are um, in that building or in the neighborhood. So um, my, my feeling is that we won't pay, um, we won't defer April rent. We'll just won't, we'll let them know and have let them know that we're just not able to pay it. We won't be paying it and um, that we need to um, come to some sort of agreement on, you know, going down the road on what we'll do. But um, I honestly, since, you know, you're closed up and it's a governor's order that you have to uh, basically be that way. I, I don't see why a retailer should have to pay rent at, at this point. I agree, it's tough times. I mean, it's not like we took the blueprint off the shelf and said, oh, what are we gonna do during this pandemic? Um, it, this is, a, I, I, I don't wanna use any word that's gonna send Michelle off. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I don't ever want to hear PPP or PPP or PPE or any of that again. Um, yes, yeah, the things we, we all of a sudden had to learn to, to understand. Um, but I, do, I mean, it's, this is stuff we've never been through. Even the most veteran of business owner that has seen, you know, the great, the 
Great Recession and the Depression. And I mean, there it's all this different. And um, you've got all sorts of different circumstances that um, we certainly will learn from. But when you're in the midst of it, um, it's just react, right? The next thing coming. I was going to um, just see if folks have been thinking about what that reopen looks like. Um, the governor came out with a draft plan. I think it might've been a little bit early, but um, a draft plan of what the, the rolling phased out openings would be and thinking about how, how do you look at that, that phasing in and is it possible for you to have a certain number of customers in your stores? Can you keep your employees safe? What kinds of things do you have to have on hand to make that happen? Well, one of the things you mentioned is having supplies on hand, which are really difficult to get right now. I mean, I have employees when it's their personal time and they're going to the grocery store looking for wipes or, you know, any type of <laughs> cleaning things, um, you know, and trying to buy them on their own time because we just can't get, we can't order um, hand sanitizer, we, if we see some, then we send every employee in uh, to the grocery store that has the hand sanitizer. So it's, it's challenging, you know, and we do have homemade masks um, that we, that our employees have. Um, I, I'm more cautious probably. I, I don't see like my store having kids. I think, unfortunately, I would probably allow adults in before the kids because kids touch everything and they could be a carrier that we don't know. So I'm a little bit more cautious on that. Um, I don't know. It's, it's hard and it gets, it certainly can get, you know, some customers have been really upset with me. They just want to buy a puzzle and they don't understand why I'm making it so hard for them. Um, but that I feel that this is what I have to do. I have to, you know, I, I'm still not sleeping well at night, but I'm not doing that. You know, I have to, to feel comfortable with my own choices. So I'm going to err, probably be more cautious and try to make the, allow for them to still be able to buy things, but in a different way. Um, and if I slowly get back, I, I might require a mask. I don't know. I, I, I know the toy store. I was on a call earlier this morning with other toy store owners. We were all talking about this. Would we have, um, children allow children in our store? Would we require our employees to wear masks? Would we take their temperatures? I mean, it sounds crazy, but it's it's not sounding so crazy anymore, but it, it did in the beginning. Like I couldn't imagine taking people's temperature before they came in my store. Like it sounded so crazy, but now it it's starting to sound like maybe that's the responsible thing to do. I don't know. But where do I get those supplies? Right. And I think that's one of the things that we've been looking at as well is, you know, trying to be forward thinking about, yeah. you know, assisting our businesses in terms of you know, what kinds of protective equipment will they need in order to, you know, do that sort of slow rolling open. And, you know, I'm with you, Michelle. I'm, I would prefer that we are cautious and don't take, you know, five steps backward yeah. um, and have to do this again, right? Um, because I'm not sure how many of us would, would make it through another round of this, right? If you open up, you get sort of back to some normalcy, and then in the winter you come back and, and you're doing this again. I just, um, that just seems not uh, not possible I, would, I will note in the chat that brad smith has um offered a recommendation that the drop shop distillery in hillsborough it has ha hand sanitizer so they're making they went from whiskey to hand sanitizer okay. and brad, brad tells me that the two do not taste the same so just <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> yeah uh, yeah i was that's gonna i was just gonna bring up something um you know, what I see us doing is starting to make appointments with people for a month from whenever things start to, you know, open up a little bit. And I wonder if retail shops could do the same thing. Our appointment would be to go do a portrait of someone or a family or whatever. But um, I wonder if retail shops could make appointments with customers to come in, you know, on a, on yeah. a, one by one basis type of thing. Just a thought. Yeah, we, we played with that a little bit before uh, we closed up and it, uh, it was something that uh, that's a strong possibility that we'll go back to again. Mm -hmm. um, it's, 
it's convenient and it's just a matter of, you know, setting it up. And um, I think people appreciate that opportunity to have that one on one experience and then also know that they're not gonna have to worry about someone else on the other aisle or the other across the store breathing on them at all. And I think that's a real possibility. One of my things is I've had to change my computers around um, in the stores to, and so that works when we're closed to keep my employees apart. I mean, we could probably just run with one, but um, sometimes we're checking inventory, you know, we're doing other things on this other second computer. So we've kind of changed our layout to protect my employees. Um, and that was harder. That's one of the reasons why we decided to close earlier um, was because that we couldn't do that if we um, were open. And so it's, it's definitely a little easier when we're, when we're closed to control the environment. And so our two top performing, I mean, the, the Hillsboro store is definitely growing, but our two other stores are in centers that have more foot traffic than downtown Hillsboro, sadly. And that's what we're trying to grow downtown Hillsboro to have more foot traffic. Um, but uh, the foot traffic, people just walking in and purchasing something, I, I don't see that happening for quite a while. I, I, I think, I yeah, I think our customers are also sort of, um, modifying their own like i know i've modified i used to love to go to the grocery store and now i make you know i write down and i save it up and i'm like do i really need that maybe i don't need that <laughs> i don't want to deal with it all like that it's not an, a pleasant experience going to the grocery store like it used to be for me it's become a stressful uh, experience yeah. basically is what it yeah. is and I don't dilly dally. I'm in and out. I like, I'm, <laughs> I either can get it or no. And, and, you know, just as we're seeing shortages on some things, like I tried to buy yeast and flour and, and the things I can't get my daughter's at home baking. Uh, and um, so she gives me a list and then I try to go in. We're going to see shortages in other parts. Like I know m my vendors, I have certain companies that can't ship product right now. And I know that that's going to be intensified later. We won't, maybe we don't see it right now because I did have inventory, but they're not shipping to my vendors. And some of my vendors are in states that are not, uh, they're not open. Um, and so we'll see that later. And I'm wondering what that's going to look like for the fourth quarter for my business, which is most retailers biggest say our, most of our sales come from the fourth quarter. Kimberly asked a question about, um, well, first of all, she had a great marketing for the, the one-off shopping, calling it a boutique experience. Mm -hmm. And then her question was about um, gift certificates. Has that helped out at all in terms of cash flow and any kind of really measurable sales? Nope. We sold a couple. Um, it's not big but then again every single sale is important and so the two sales that we have had um are important um it it you know the marketing aspect of it you know how much do uh well that's another thing we get into is the is the marketing how often do you send out emails how often do you do posts what's too much what's too what's not enough and then the content of those as far as um do you focus um, the whole email on just gift certificates or do you uh, emphasize the curbside um, service? What's the most important thing from your customer's perspective as far as what's going to get them to come in? Um, right now, I, I think is convenience, one, as far as how can you make it convenient for them? And then secondly, um, what are you going to offer them when, you, when, they, when they do um, interact with you? How, what sort of product do you have? And uh, going way back to you're talking about the um, the packets of things, Michelle, that you were putting together, and that's one of the webinars that I was on. Um, the pre presenter had five points um, to enhance your store experience, and um, one of the things she suggested was the uh, um, what she called um, curated boxes, um, having a collection of items together um, to to meet a certain need or as was suggested, a certain age group, um, certain type of demographic, that type of thing, um, that uh, here's a, it all together and you don't have to worry about uh, shopping around for different types of things. This meets a certain need as far as what we're looking at. But 
So um, final question in terms of how many of you have um, gone after any of the federal types of funding programs and had any success in that area? We did get uh, yesterday the, um, I'm going to lose the acronym, but it's the Econ uh, Emergency IDL. Yes. Ideal. Mm -hmm. And so we got the $10,000. It's a loan. So we, yeah, we're very happy. I mean, I think my husband did like five OMGs <laughs> on his text to me on that. Uh, so uh, we, yeah, sadly, yeah. right? 10,000 is forgivable. Uh, no, I don't think on that one. I felt oh, no, I, th I thought it was. It is. Well, if it's used on payroll and yep. utilities. How, this, can I ask when you applied for that? You know, um, so my husband has been doing that. Um, and he did it the first day that it came out that we could apply. I feel like it was that April 1st. I think it was. No fooling. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> So one, so I, I thought this one was a loan. So there's like, there's multiple ones. It's a grant. It, yeah. yeah. It's an advance. Okay. Um, the, to the PPP one that we applied for, we, uh, our bank is U.S. Bank. Um, and unfortunately, U.S. Bank didn't open it up to apply until a little later. Um, so we were late to the party and did not get those funds. We were, um, like our paperwork was approved, but we didn't get it in. And the day that that was kind of all happening where we got an email back from them was the day that they ran out of money. So this was a different one. Um, right. The idle and, and you can actually get them both. So the, yeah, we are hopeful that when they open more money up that we might get the other one. So uh, I, I, for some reason, I thought it was a loan that we had to pay back, but you know, again, Merrick and I haven't, we've been, I've been working so much that I haven't <laughs> talked to him, but I, thought he I thought he said we'd have to pay this back but I don't know well it's yeah. I, again I think the first 10,000 of it that is forgivable mm -hmm. um if you use 75 I think it's a 75 25 percent so payroll am I getting this right Sherry yeah and, that's actually I I applied for both um I didn't hear back for the EIDL that was a ten thousand dollar grant that is forgivable if it's used on specific things and there was no percentage. The PPP I had applied for and um, within two days the bank contacted me and says they're out of money but then a week later they reached out to me and said there's going to be more money so let's follow through with your application process and that's the one where 75 percent needs to be used on payroll um, because they want you to be able to retain your employees. Um, if they've already left and are on unemployment, then you cannot pay them as part of that 75%. And then the other 25%, it can be spent on utilities, um, your lease, things like that. So that's the first $10,000. And then I, and, and actually, you need to let them know how much your payroll is, what the average is, you times it by 2.5%. And then, you know, that's the amount that you qualify for. Um, I had also heard with the EILD that um, they ended up changing it where you couldn't just automatically get $10,000, you could get $1,000 per employee. So I'm still waiting to hear for the EIDL and I just turned in my completed application and paperwork to Banner Bank yesterday. So it's kind of wait and see because it the funding still needs to be approved in the house. Right. But, but happens, they'll be ready to go. <laughs> it happens tomorrow. Yes. And which means that the president's going to sign it. I would be surprised if they didn't start funding it Friday. So the advice I'm giving to anybody that's, you know, seeking out the PPP is to go to your bank and hound them to death and say, we've had a relationship for a very long time. I want to be in the pipeline. I want to be at the front of the list. I want to be at the front of the list. And you t just remind them how long you've been a customer of theirs and that they want, you want to make sure that they have a relationship with SBA. There's going to be a lot of um, commotion when it opens up again. You know, the SBA has a backlog <laughs> of applications that they already received that they can't, that they couldn't fund. So those are gonna go through first. Um, if you get, you'll know you've got the PPP 
when you get an SBA approve, approval. It has to come from the SBA. Even though it goes through your bank, the SBA has to give you an approval for that. But those are, that's your key, keys to the kingdom. You'll know you've made it when you get that approval number. But the idol is opening up as well. So if you really need, um, and it's not, they, it was started out as a $10,000 grant. I don't know how they're going to frame it this time, whether it's going to be $1,000 per employee. And then when they started getting really low on money, they limited it to, to an additional $15,000 loan for a total of $25,000. It was, a t I thought it was a $2 million loan to begin with. So we'll, it'll be interesting to see where those go, but definitely don't, don't waste any time. If you, we know it's going to go through Congress tomorrow and they're not going to stop it. So it's just a matter of getting it funded again. And, and I, I, I think it's important too, that you plan out how you're going to be using those funds and double check on how those funds um, are to be used because my impression with the, you can't use um, the PPP funds for the same things you use the idle funds for. They have to be for distinct different items. And the um, PPP, it was 75% uh, of it I had thought was for employees, also for um, lease costs and utilities. And then the other 25% could be for what you, whatever you want. Um, and you get the set, the forgiveness if you spend 75% on employees uh, leases or um, utilities but again it's, double it's check that I think yeah. it's 75 for employees and 20 yeah it, it's broken down you have to put your percentages and they all have to equal a hundred percent but you the lowest you can mm -hmm. go for your employee payroll is 75 percent yeah. And then the, uh, the idle funds were, uh, you could use them for whatever you wanted. I didn't really think there was any, um, and I haven't looked at this lately, but I think uh, you can use it for whatever you want, um, such as product purchases, those types of things, your vendors and stuff like that. Um, yeah. But um, you can't overlap the funds from the PPP with, for the same purposes you do the EIDL. And I think you can, if you've got, if you furloughed or laid off employees, you can bring them back and that can account for the 75%. Is that correct? I yeah. And you, ha you have to get your employment level back up by the end of the eight week period that you are funded for. You have to have the same number of employees on the payroll as you did when you first started. Now, how they're going to enforce that, I don't know, but uh, that was when they first released it, that was part of the plan. We did. And that's tough too, because if they have left and they're on unemployment, they're making more money on unemployment mm -hmm. than they would just be paid. And then they said that that's double dipping. So well, um, if, they, if they were furloughed, part of the furlough requires them to come back when their job is open. The, the process of them not having to search for a, a job every week and, and put that into the employment, right. department, then that's a furlough. And that means they, they are required to come back when the job is available. Otherwise, they have to pay that money back. All right, we have one minute left. Wow, this is a great conversation. I was um, just going to say that I did not, we did not get notification on that um, idle lo that loan um, that just hit the bank and there was no follow up to it. So that was a very surprising one for us. Um, and I have heard of other small businesses getting that one as well as the PPP. Um, so you can which one all. is that? I'm sorry, I had to step yeah, away. The PPP can be higher than the 10,000, but we did not get any notification. It just hit our bank. So yeah. uh, we didn't get an email or any letter or anything. It just showed up and that's when my husband flipped out. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and this new, loan, this new loan that they're doing with the state, the new one that they just talked about, you can't get that if you've already got the EIDL from what I can read. Right. I think that if you received either the PPP or the EIDL, you're not, you're not, a, you're not qualified, right? Yeah. So can you, we can't do the PPP. We're not, we are not qualified for the PPP and I have not done the EIDL yet. Be sure can you apply for all of them at once and then whichever one you get first is the one that you go with? <laughs> I, well, you, you can take them both if, if you can. But the, well, the you're not one, able to take both the EIDL and the new one that's coming down from the okay. state. Right, right. They're, they're restricting it. If you received any federal funding, then you can't apply. So, so I, I don't know. Can you apply for both of them and then choose which one you take? 
Um, I think I would apply for both of them and pray. <laughs> That's where we are. And what's the name of the one with the state? Somebody said eboard. Is no, it just came out. They just voted on it today, and so the applications aren't even live yet. But it what did it? the emergency board. Oh. So what do we Google to find it? I, I actually had a post come through from the Beaverton Chamber of Commerce, and that's how I found out about it. And we posted it to, on our Facebook as well. Um, right, you guys not just like right after they did. And it's just a, um, it's just outlining what the e-board's going to fund, and it, it just has basic information. They'll, um, in the next day or so, they'll probably have more information. Um, our program next Tuesday is with Janine Salman, Representative Janine Salman, House District 30, to talk about these and this whole e-board and funding. So be sure and grab a seat for that one as well. Be sure and register. Thank you both. I want to thank uh, John and Michelle for helping us navigate this very tricky conversation. And thank you all for joining us. Really, truly appreciate it. Wishing yeah. you, um, you know, health and safety out there. Take care. Thanks, Deanna. Thank you. Thanks, Michelle.